Hello everybody. So today I'm going to talk about a type of acne that is so misdiagnosed and it has to do with foods. A lot of the time when people have this type of acne and I'm going to show you in a picture right here what that looks like, food related acne is often given medication and prescription medication to clear up when it really has nothing to do with oil. It has to do with the gut. The gut is obviously very important for our life, for, for our health. And it's really important to understand that the skin is the largest organ of elimination. So if you're not eating foods that support your body type, your system, it is going to come out and it's going to show you in a way that um, is really interesting. So I've talked about face mapping in the past and one of the, the areas that's most prevalent with this food related acne is going to be this area here. So in face mapping, you've got your small intestine here. You've got very high up around the eye here, the stomach area, and then you've got down here, you've got the large intestine. So it's really important to understand that because when you start to get those tiny, tiny little white bumps under the skin here, it's usually around the small intestine area here that you're gonna see them appear and then they will spread down into the large intestine which is going to come down here underneath this jawline. Now food related acne is not a pimple. It doesn't have pus in it. It doesn't hurt when you touch it. They're not nodules or papules. It is congestion. They are white bumps under the skin and on some people you see like so many of them and it'll spread and it comes down around here around the mouth area too because this area here being um, small intestine large intestine around the mouth then is the the female sex organs the the ovaries you know if you're eating certain types of fat that your body just doesn't work well with then it's going to come out and show you and later in life is is when you could have you know higher cholesterol so people that usually tend to have these little bumps under the skin all this congestion they're going to uh, if you ask them in the family if someone has cholesterol issues there's usually going to be mother father grandparents um, and you know sometimes it, you know they also have the little bumps their parents their grandparents as well but it it what it does mean is that your body doesn't break down those fats now let me tell you what those fats are that is going to be your dairy so your cheese your milk and even soy milk even you know though it's not considered a dairy it is very thick in that it's nourishing as well um, you know it's um, it's got it's it's high in fat so no cheese, no milk, no ice cream, no dairy, um, period, uh, no soy milk, no peanut butter. That's a very, very oily peanut and it is a major problem uh, for a lot of people with acne. So anybody who has acne, I take them off um, of peanuts and especially food related acne, you know, termed acne, which are tiny little bumps under the skin. So egg yolks is another one, no egg yolks. And, um, you know, I've, I've also found that some of the omegas, like a lot of, you know, the fish, especially salmon is very oily. And although omegas three and six are really great in that they are a very good vitamin for a lot of people um, that just can't use that particular oil, they don't break it down well, it is going to be a problem. And of, of course, there's the, the fried foods and things like that too. You want to stay away from those types of things. So fat in general. So those tiny, tiny little bumps under the skin, if you do have them coming out on your, your skin, you've had that issue going on in your stomach. It just didn't happen yesterday or last week or last month. It's been going on for some time and it's usually years, okay? So it comes out, it's showing you, it's not working in here. Usually you get bloating to like you're not feeling good when you have dairy a lot of the time. And so intuitively, a lot of people know that already. But, you know, as I said, these types of little bumps under the skin here, it's a major, major problem. And you've really got to look at the food. Um, you know, as I said before earlier, um, you know, a lot of people, they'll go and see about this type of acne and it's misdiagnosed. They're given a pill 
pills don't work on this type of acne you have to take people off foods and if I take people off foods um, I you, you see within a very short time two or three months for sure even less time you're gonna see a major improvement in the skin so if you have that type of acne it doesn't hurt when you touch it tiny tiny lots of little bumps under the skin um, and it starts spreading down here it's usually starts here will start spreading down here um, then those are the foods that you have to stay off um, as I said it is a certain type of body types or everyone we're all different um, it's it's why you know someone could be on the Atkins diet and be very very healthy and not have high cholesterol and then you take another body type and you put that person on the Atkins diet, which again, Atkins is cheese, meat, all these things, beef, you know. Um, they eat that Atkins diet and they could end up with high cholesterol. So you have to understand that we are all different and um, and what we bring into this world from our parents and our grandparents, it, it influences our body today. So it's important that you understand that it's not, you know, for people that have these issues here and congestion, tons of congestion and it starts spreading down you have to look at your diet you have to go off those foods and I'm telling you it will make the difference of night and day um, the other thing is that you have to have it extracted so it doesn't usually go away on its own once it's come out you have to it's not a milia you know although you know milia is also is a fatty type substance that will just build and build and build and stay there for a long time milias you can also get from you know a very very nourishing eye cream for instance um, or sometimes when people have had surgery around their eyes and they've had to use like a Vaseline something that is um, like a raincoat that type of a substance you also give you milliers you know in very very nourishing overly nourishing products that, that are comedogenic can give you a milia which is a fatty substance that usually has to be removed with a, a needle um, now or just pricked with a needle that's that's how you have to remove milliers now these other types that I'm talking about the food related um, congestion bumps they can be squeezed without a needle so and they will come out so um, it's this area here as I said tiny little bumps and you have to get it out you've got to have it extracted it will not go away on its own it's an easy easy skin to fix um, as long as people stay away from those foods and you know maybe you know later in life things can change your body change your organs regenerate so it doesn't mean that you're going to always have to stay off dairy but you know likely um, it, it could too it could mean that but it just you know our bodies change and and as you get older and I'm older um, you know that you know you kind of things just start to change and you know what foods make you feel good and what foods don't so it's a really important one and as I said incredibly misdiagnosed I cannot even believe the amount of people that get misdiagnosed for this type of um, acne but it um, it is it's so easy 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 to fix okay so um, you know and again the products that I'm going to put somebody on really are secondary you cannot get rid of this this type of acne if you are not extracting it number one and number two if you're still eating those foods so huge priority is got to go off those foods and um, and then you're going to start to see a huge change in the skin now occasionally and I would say probably in the 42 years I've been doing hands-on work I would say that there's a handful of people that even once I took them off the foods um, their skin did not improve 80% like it should. It improved 20 or 30%. And what I realize is that occasionally, sometimes, if they have gallbladder issues, um, you know, the gallbladder is important for dealing with certain types of fats too. So sometimes, if the gallbladder isn't a strong um, organ, then it's going to be a little bit of an issue too but it's so rare I mean in 42 years and doing over a hundred thousand facials um, it is um, it's so rare but I have seen that and I have seen it to uh, um, be you know to do with the gallbladder um, so you know some sometimes there's certain autoimmune diseases that um, that make things a little bit difficult to treat 
but you you do get progress with it but it's the progress sometimes is a little bit slower uh, usually you know within even within a month if somebody is you know not dealing with an autoimmune not dealing with issues with their gallbladder then you are going to see a major change in somebody's skin within a month and um, you know having a facial or two facials having the extractions done going off those foods if there's an autoimmune you're talking maybe it's going to take you three months um, so that's just the difference, but it is, it's a very, very easy acne to treat. Um, and I say acne, I don't really look at it as acne if, it, if I'm just dealing with that type of skin. Um, the other thing that can happen is you can get congestion up in this area here in, in where people do apply their blush. And that will happen often just from, you know, using a certain type of blush brand or brands that are very comedogenic. So sometimes you will see congestion from, from product or makeup and, and sometimes sunblock too when it is um, certain brands that just are not fabulous in um, for, for skin, for face, sunblock, they're probably better for body. But um, but some there's a couple of brands that I'm not uh, you know I'm not keen on for people that that deal with this type of congestion, and um, I will put those names in underneath here. Um, it's not to say that they're bad makeups; they're just bad for certain people with a certain skin because it can cause congestion. And I've seen it with three particular brands um, a lot. Um, over the years like in fact you know just so much because most of my business in my treatment space is for is dealing with agnetic skins so I'm dealing with people that easily get congested and easily you know have larger pores and things so I will put those three brands in the bottom as I said they're beautiful makeups to look at and they, they're fabulous for some people, but they're not if you you have and you suffer with congestion. So uh, so I hope this is helpful to you. Um, you know, it's, as I said, once you, once you get that under control, there are certain types of um, products that, that I would put you on just in the very beginning. And it's going to be that non-foaming gel, gel A cleanser. I do not like foaming cleansers, as you all know. I've said it a gazillion times. Make sure you are cleansing your face really well. You're doing a good job when you are washing your face. Um, I do have a video on just how to wash your face because you need to be doing it extra well at night, at, counting to at least 30, double cleansing, using a warm wet washcloth to take it off. You need some type of healing product to deal with this type of acne. Usually, usually an aloe-based one is great. It's great to have an exfoliant that's chemical slash um, enzyme, one that absorbs dead cells and, uh, and just helps um, give that surface regeneration to the skin, has a buffing effect. That's also really important. And, um, and you, you don't wanna use anything you know, too much, too heavy. You wanna keep your things light. So you wanna use you know, moisturizers that are more non, definitely non-comedogenic. Make sure your, um, your sunblocks are your physical sunblocks. And again, non-comedogenic, very important when you're prone to congestion. So I hope this was helpful to you and I will be putting some things underneath so you can see, um, you know, just some more products and things that if you have that issue and some recommendations of what you can use. So subscribe to my, um, my Instagram, guys, if you're not already. I do give a lot of tips on there. I do lives. And it was good to see you all again. And I'll be back to see you soon. Bye-bye.